Let's start addressing the main topic. I mean, all Panathinaikos fans are waiting, they're waiting for this pod. Of course, they got disappointed when they saw Jordan Lloyd and Eric McCollum on the pod uh, on, 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 <laughs> on Tuesday uh, because they wanted to see us uh, in pain, yeah. in, in desperation and uh, depression. The real reason was that Ritas was not able to get to himself, you know, to make a pot so quick after that game. So that's why we're doing it yeah, only now, I was a week after the game. I was, exactly. I could yeah. barely get up, get up from the bed, so I was really suffering. Yeah. <laughs> Even the World Cup couldn't cheer me. Yeah. So you know, and if football doesn't cheer Ritas, you know, and, you know, it's bad. And today, today I woke up and I said to myself, "This is the time." Now, now I can never, now I can address let's address address all these people that were questioning me and calling me a clown. Uh, for the first time in my life, I've experienced what it means like when um, random people go to your random Instagram what posts okay. and leave comments. Like I, oh, on Instagram I, as well. I didn't know that he has wow. Instagram. Actually. I don't really post on Instagram. I, I do a p post like once a year, but. All of a sudden, I see people from Greece commenting on my 2015 photos. Uh, what they were saying? What they were saying? Uh, a, a lot of stuff about legendary best club in the world. Do you respect us now? And and blah blah blah. And I also had a lot of message requests. Uh, <laughs> one guy just messaged me a print screen of of the scoreboard, Raul okay. Pau, and I replied to him with a thumbs up. <laughs> what else can I say? Uh, so, the best I, part I, know, is I, I know you didn't read any any question <laughs> yet, but probably I'm answering all of those yeah. at no, the first same, question at is the same why, time. Why do you hate Pau? They won the game, fair enough. They they beat Asfeld, they beat Virtus. I still have a lot of question marks about their defensive potential, where they're going to be at the end of the season and all that stuff. But I think people sometimes overreact to things like, why do you hate Pau? I love Panathinaikos and his history. I, I admire Dimitris Diamantidis, Mike Batiste, or Jelko Bradovic. It has nothing to do with me judging their current roster. Like last year, they were hopeless, just like Jalgiris. Mm -hmm. And we were saying that, and it was obvious. About both teams. This season, they are not hopeless. They invested money, but I'm just questioning, did they sign the right players? Is this roster capable of winning games and making the playoffs? These are simple questions. And is Dwayne Bacon the right fit for the team? I don't know. Right now they won some games. Fair enough. It's not like they beat some elite teams. Let's wait and see what happens. Uh, up until the new year, then in the second part of the season. Virtus Zalgiris and as well, uh, you know, none of these teams are, uh, you know... I never said that. Although uh, they played a good game against Olympiacos. That was the great true. test for well, them. I didn't the see it, so I, I cannot say yeah. much about that. But as I said, yes, Nate Walters is a good point guard. He makes them more organized. Yes, Derek Williams is a quality player. Yes, Dwayne Bacon is a is an elite scorer. Is it smart to have two centers like Papayanis and Goditis? I don't think so. That's my, my opinion. That's... Uh, the opinion I brought on the table uh, when we were discussing during the preseason. So to be and to be honest, I remember uh, us when Panathinaikos were struggling to beginning of the season, and uh, I don't remember if it was if, if it was Ridis or if it was me mentioning that you know let's wait for this team to have Nate Walters back, you know, yeah. to see their potential because without Nate Walters, you are without your main point yeah. guard, and you can't really judge uh, their potential or how they're playing uh, without him. With him now. He's they're, they're playing much better than than without him, and it's mm. normal. You know, he was supposed to be their main point guard. He was the guy that the Enerdonis wanted because he had a really great season with him last year in Cervena Zvezda. So, uh, with him, they're much better. Can they make the playoffs, guys? No, they will. You guarantee, <laughs> Pantinagos are not making the playoffs. I don't see them in the playoffs. <laughs> Neither. Uh, is it is it true that uh, Yorgos Papayanis uh, was like mo inspired by people doubting Panathinaikos? <laughs> let's, Donatus, let's explain let's that situation. Let's start this way. I made the interview with Derek Williams uh, before Jalgiris Panathinaikos game. It was the, on the eve of that game, and yeah. I met some let's say Panathinaikos representatives, and they were showing uh, the guy was showing me uh, articles in Greece in Greek. 
uh, where we were on headlines. Like uh, he showed some headlines where I saw in Greek alphabet that it was Shalauskas and some statement there was Vishnauskas and some statement. I, I wasn't the headline when Andrew Andrew's thing uh, was yeah, happening. Yeah. So we it are seems like more popular in Greece than in Lithuania. Probably nobody quotes us in Lithuania, nope. but somebody yeah. quotes us in Greece, which is cool. Uh, it shows that our podcast is recognized uh, worldwide. So, and you know, the headline was like, for example, Vishnauskas uh, says that Panaikos is bad, Jalgiris uh, will win for sure, and something <laughs> like that. So, I believe a lot of hate from the fans comes from these articles, and obviously, naturally. At that article, there might be only these spicy and bad things we say about Panathinaikos. Nobody, mm. nobody cares about what we said. How patient you have with, uh, to be with Dejan Radonjic, because he got the completely new team. He didn't have Nate Walters. He didn't have Dwayne Bacon before. When he started the season, they were uh, missing not only Bacon. There was no Ponit coming. They were missing some important pieces of their roster. There were a lot of. Uh, I was the last part. I was saying that hey, this 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 victory was important. I was giving some hope, uh, let's say, but probably it was never quoted on these articles. So I naturally believe that this uh, this hate comes from these articles, and it's natural that you know Panaikos fans probably they are sharing some stuff. And when you're on Twitter or on social media, I believe that players saw that. Who knows? Maybe Panaikos. Uh, representatives brought some some stuff what we said you know just to inspire the team but how we got this uh, shirt um I, after the game i wanted to have papayanis for short one on one uh, flash interview because he was the uh, last guy he was the only guy of this roster uh, uh he was the single guy from the 2021 uh, roster when panaikos last time had a three game winning streak there was a team with Rick Pitino, Nicolatas, Jimmer for the Tyrese Rice. I mean, when you look at uh, look at it, it's 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 incredible. So it took like uh, two years for them to get a free uh, game winning streak, and I just wanted to talk about him shortly. His opening statement was, uh, of course, I, I gave him a platform just to say something about the game, and his opening statement uh, statement was. It was all about the motivation because there were some rumors that uh, <laughs> uh, we were losing Konas, and he looked at me, you know, and Papianis is a tall guy, so he was like. He was talking and he looked like 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 this, you know. And of course, I smiled, I laughed because, you know, actually, after afterwards, we had a very normal conversation. I congratulated yeah. him with the victory. Everything was fine. And I had this discussion with some PAO members uh, near the locker room and everybody, they were just laughing, you know. That's, yeah. that's how you're probably supposed to take all those, you know, predictions <laughs> and then the predictions go wrong. It's just a sure. joke. It's just nice to <laughs> laugh. Uh, something about it's it's funny if a uh, random dude in Vilnius who's not even a professional yeah. baller or or coach or just a sportscaster a random dude that loves basketball predicts a yearly game and it makes such a big fuss around Europe yeah from Vilnius to Athens like it's, it's I think it's that Athens really. listeners should take some clips of our pod to show <laughs> maybe maybe it, it will help <laughs> where we are I'm saying that it probably is the last thing uh, that the milano game is a real depression you know <laughs> but actually to all the um angry fans um, because some of them were angry some of them were just trying to be humorous and i appreciate that all the memes and stuff even calling me clown yeah i look like a clown you always look like a clown when you predict something and it happens the opposite way but i, I just gotta say this i am a sportscaster I'm paid to make statements and give predictions. This is my job. This is my everyday job. This is what I have to do. This is what I have to deliver. Of course, I have to accept the consequences, but I'm really not used to all these reactions because I'm doing this in Lithuanian market for Lithuanian people. They usually know what to expect from me. They listen to me during live games and during the podcast i get some comments but it's always different it's not like this so it's not hate on your instagram so you're not you're so i'm not hating on pow but please just don't hate me as a person if i give a prediction and it goes wrong that's it let's respect each other let's, we can let's keep it as a basketball conversation banter right? humor i accept all of it but trash talk it's good yeah let, it's good let's not start like calling each other names and yeah. hating each other. Actually, I remember uh, even when we talked, you know, bad about Pau before at the start of the season, there were some YouTube comments under uh, under our podcast that were 
guys, I'm a, I'm a Panathinaikos fan and uh, it's really hard to be a Panathinaikos fan right now, but I really admire your uh, objective talk about the state of the team. And then he went on to talk about all the problems, but he appreciated the way, you know, we looked uh, not saying that everything is fine or everything is great about Pau, so. Yeah, and it's natural that we questioned things and we're still questioning mm. uh, things. And talking about this um, thing that we all support Jalgiris and it's a painful loss for us. I mean, <laughs> this group behind this table is probably the, the most independent group that you can have. Augustus is probably more Milan fan than Jalgiris fan. Ritis is the most independent uh, commentator in Lithuania. He's actually uh, getting some messages from basketball fans, wh wh whether it's uh, Jalgiris or Lithuanian national team fans. They try, they want him to support the team more. Oh, yeah. you're not <laughs> yeah, supporting exactly. Lithuanian national <laughs> yes. team. You're not it's supporting true. Jalgiris. I've, re I've read it so it's many What's times. wrong with you? It's Me, true. I put Jalgiris in, six, uh, in our power rankings in 16th position. I mean, Pau was 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 above uh, Jalgiris, although I, I didn't although I also didn't saw them very high. But but still, I mean, this is the most independent group that you can have from Lithuania talking about Panaikos, Jalgiris, or any other team. So so please please yeah. use use your brains. I mean, Pau has two Lithuanian players. We all love Gudaitis and Grigonis, and they have Panaikos Kalizakis, who was beloved in that Kabylis. How we could hate that team? I mean, it's probably it has the most Lithuanian ties in the entire year league. You know, it's so delusional. My second question is quite similar, but I just want to hear your opinion on this. In modern basketball, we see a lot of ex NBA players, stars, choose after their careers to play in China or Taiwan or that level of basketball leagues, and I understand the reasons for that. But how do you think, if, for example, Dwight Howard, Taco Fall, or any other big name player who choose uh, who chose such a career path would choose to play in Euroleague, what would be their performance in Euro Euroleague, considering their athletic form and that particular moment when they played in one of these other basketball leagues and if your league would attract such big name players to play here would it be able to raise the popularity and the recognition of the entire league in uh, in the wider world well of course you would get a lot more attention if you sign Carmelo Anthony for your team but it's not like it hasn't been done before Allen Iverson arrived to Besiktas it was not a good basketball decision <laughs> for him to go there and for Besiktas to sign him although there was so much attention. I remember I was uh, following EuroCup that season and uh, Eurosport was the broadcaster for, for EuroCup. So all of a sudden, they were picking like random games to show. They were picking games, probably those that are the best during the week. All of a sudden, they start showing only Besiktas games mm. because Alan Iverson is there. We saw Lamar Odom signing for Bosconia, but Odom had a lot of personal issues yeah, yeah. Mm. at the time. Um, we saw during the lockout, oh, yeah. Deron Williams balling actually for Besiktas under Ergin Ataman head coach. So Ataman coached Deron Williams, probably Larkin and Mitch are not even the best perimeter players that he has coached. And <laughs> Just a random <laughs> yeah, <laughs> recognition <laughs> during the <laughs> flow. Very, very random. So the thing is, uh, if big NBA names sign for European teams instead of Taiwan, China, or wherever they go, we're talking about, let's be real, washed up superstars. Mm. It's not like they're going to deliver. It's not like they're going to be key players leading the team to glory. It's not like they're going to win the EuroLeague. For marketing reasons, to attract some attention, maybe yes, but... Which coach in your league right now would like to have Carmelo Anthony for, for 2 million euros playing no defense and just making couple, a couple of jump shots in a EuroLeague game? And Itamar actually has a pretty similar question related to head coaches uh, who, who in their eyes should be fired. Who is the best coach for Maccabi? And okay, uh, let's put some context. Just coach. Moses Barda from one reported that and Maccabi is considering probably at least four head coaching uh, candidates. It's Pablo Alasso, Sergio Hernandez uh, from Argentina national team. At least that's how I remember him. Uh, Igor Milicic, a Polish national team head coach, and Yanis Sforopoulos. First of all, it's weird to me to hear that you have a coach 
and there is rumors coming out that you are already looking for potential replacements but for that's how it works in this business if you want to fire the head coach you have to have a good replacement it's, it's in how, most cases it's how it works yeah you have to search for the replacements i uh, agree with that but in the nba you don't hear about you know this coach might be replaced by five other coaches before mm. he is actually fired like the news get out after you know somebody's mm, fired true. and not while this guy is already in the position and preparing the next game for you know for Maccabi so yeah uh, but, but we didn't have the same situation with Chus Mateo there were three names thrown yeah, I, I remember Sasha, and Sasha Georgievich. Georgievich was yeah. mentioned and then Real Madrid went on to win to win uh, yeah. to the on to in the winning streak everything everything until now yeah maybe that's Maccabi plan as well I'm not sure. <laughs> but the question was who who would be the best coach for them? Andres Schillens. Uh each of you could you share your top ten of European local leagues? Top ten. Yeah. Wow, that that's, ACB. that's an extended list. A C B is number one. Big uh, gap. <laughs> Turkey? Second? Turkey, Italy, France. Gap. Abba League. Bundesliga. Greek League. Mm. Big gap. <laughs> LKL and Israel, Israel, Israel or Poland. I think Israeli league. I is, think Israeli is league above. is above LKL. Yeah. I just yeah. I just put in these uh, Tire, tiers. Yeah, yeah tiers. Mm, mm, okay. Fair enough. Top ten. Wow. I I I couldn't do a top ten. We can have a debate about let's say Italian league versus Greek. Italy, Turkey, France, or Abba League, Bundesliga, or I don't know yeah. Greek. The, Bundesliga. Why I would go. For Bundesliga to be higher, mm -hmm. uh, final four. Final, uh, final four question by Low. Why is your league dragging on so long to announce final four host? I'm hearing that's that's the question which even the upcoming hosts they don't understand why it took so long. But from what I hear, I mean, your league is already working with Konas and organizing uh, something. So it's 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 sure that the final four will be in Konas. It's just a matter of time when it will be announced. Why they're so late with the announcement, I don't know, but uh, I recommend you booking uh, May 19 and 21 weekend, because it's, it's mo the most likely that it's the weekend when the final four will take place in Konas. Can I have a say on this? Yeah. In my opinion, a solid organization should know oh. the destination of the final four before the season. That's a no-brainer. That's a huge shame, actually. And it's it was already, okay, you can say it was because of code, but it didn't add a lot of prestige to the league to uh, relocate the Final Four in February, in mm. March, like two or three months before the competition. And now, I mean, the, go surviving the COVID, you know, as Jordi Bertomeu told, that you really came back better than any other sports after COVID. And now we're starting in December. We will have Christmas soon, and still the final four host is not announced. So it should be announced before the season. Marketing you should, wise, fan experience wise, it's weird. You you, you should have. Uh, we're not demanding ticket, tickets being sold even right now. Yeah, we're not Does demanding it? to have it like in ten years in advance. No, like like FIFA World Cups, but at least I mean during the Belgrade's final four. The announcement should have uh, been published. You know that the next final four are gonna be here. It adds some, also some. some but maybe intrigue. it has something to do that w with the fact that there are not too many cities that want the final four. And it's. I, this, I was uh, waiting for you to finish, and like I was listening to you talk about okay. it, and I was like, guys, but do you maybe think that this is why nobody wants to to or, or you yeah. know organize this? Why they, they are dragging so long? There are not many teams or or cities that want mm -hmm. to do this this event i remember uh okay we have some red star and composer questions actually this one i think that this came before composer news because 100 day challenge asked us do you think red star have the best guard duo in your league with nedovic and Bildoza? hell no well we doubt it uh, but but it's a solid duo i give you that but offensively but Offen for sure <laughs> what, what about if we include composer is it a game changer in this ranking? But instead of Vildoza uh, or Nedovic? Or Nedovic, I mean, doesn't matter. Again, I mean, Mitzic and Larkin. I mean, you're competing against Mike great. James and uh, Kobo and uh, Lord Kalaitis Lloyd. Wilbekin, for example. Yeah, Kalaitis. Lucas walk up. It's Lucas Larenzakis, you say. You, mean. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you wanted to say. 
<laughs> no, it's a it's a solid. You, you spelled the uh, <laughs> wait. Uh, you spelled the uh, Dorsey and Cannon uh, wrong. <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean it's a it, it's it's a solid duo uh with Campazzo it's even better you have a great playmaker an elite playmaker but Campazzo is probably not what Zvezda needs right now. Yeah, let's uh, talk not about Campazzo. What, what do you think need? about this whole situation? First of all, I'm shocked that <laughs> if Zvezda has 2 million euros in the pocket to to sign for Kundo Campazzo, I'm really shocked. But it's it's official. Their offer is official. Yeah, now Real Madrid has nine days it's or like ten days, whatever. Seven or eight yeah. days remaining. It's, yeah. So I'm stunned, really. One point eight million uh, euro offer for the first year for a team who the there was an article three weeks ago that they have uh, trouble with some and they were, financial payables. Yeah, they, they got fined by the yearly. Yeah. They cannot actually uh, literally sign players right if now to register them in the yearly. They have money. This is this is how they do things in Serbia. <sighs> If I'm responsible for, <laughs> for, for basketball decisions in Zvezda and I have extra 2 million euros, Campasso is not what I'm going for. I would be looking for two signings or even three signings. I need a small forward. I need a player who is capable of playing four and five. I mean, with 2 million in euros, you can build half of a roster for a low-budget team. Billion, yeah. And all of a sudden, you spend two million euros on one player, which is Campasso, and you already have ball handlers Vildosa and Nedovic. Maybe it works this way. I mean, they saw that Campasso is available. They saw that he's not very convinced to go back to Real Madrid because they they parted ways in bad terms. There are all these taxation uh, things that it's it's not let's see profitable for Campasso to return right now because he still owes Madrid. 2.5 million euros, uh, something like that. But maybe it was like that. Okay, so Campazzo is a free agent. Red Star is on a big wave. They still can find some money. They were they were actually looking for a point guard. I actually heard uh, so some sources told me that they actually almost reached an agreement 